Hi everyone, today I will show you another add-on for Blender and this one is called Profile Rail Extruder. Profile Rail Extruder may be useful in those situations where extruding a profile along a path won't work with Blender curves. The add-on currently costs $7 and is available on Blender Market. I will put a link to it in the video description as usual. If you buy the add-on you will get two versions, one is version 2 and the other one, the newer version, is 3B. Both of these versions will work in Blender 3.2. There is only one difference between the two versions and I'll talk about that a little bit later. If you install the newer version and go to your preferences, you will notice that the version number is indicated as 2. I contacted the developer about this and he said it was a mistake that would be fixed in the next update. Version 3B will work as expected though and it also includes the additional new feature that I mentioned earlier. In many cases I prefer to use Blender curves and the reason is because they are usually more flexible. In this scene I have prepared a couple of examples where Blender curves work fine and you can see on this one we have a fairly detailed profile. The advantage of using curves is that I can always go to the object data properties of the profile and change the resolution for example. So I can make it more detailed or I can reduce the detail and this of course will considerably reduce the polygon count. Using Blender curves is a non-destructive process. Using Profile Ray Extruder on the other hand is a destructive process and unfortunately it has to be because in certain situations extruding profiles along paths using Blender curves just won't work. So here I have another example for a lot of architectural stuff where your paths are basically 2D shapes. Blender curves will work perfectly fine. And here I have another example. And if I go to my top view, you can see it's basically the same shape as the one I showed you before. But I've added some curves here on some of the corners. And as you can see, we're getting some distortion. This is something, however, that can easily be fixed. All you need to do is select the path go to the object data properties and right here at the top under shape you can turn this into a 2D shape and as you can see this fixes the problem. However the orientation of the profile is reversed but that is also something that we can easily fix by uh, selecting the profile. Let me just make sure that it's actually selected and selecting all the verts of the profile and just rotate these around 180 degrees. So as you can see, everything's fine now. However, there's many situations where using Blender curves just won't work. And here is one example. And you can see using Blender curves, I'm getting this result here. And this is something that cannot be fixed. And I've prepared another example. It's a slightly more complex path. And again, we're getting these distortions here. So these are two examples where Profile Rail Extruder can help you to get proper extrusions along those paths. So let's go and have a look at those examples I've prepared. So the first one basically corresponds to this one. Once you've installed Profile Rail Extruder, you will find it on the end panel under the Edit tab. Somewhere in this list, you will have a drop down that says Extrude Along Rail. And if you unfold that, you will get three options and we have to execute them in the order from the top to the bottom in order to extrude a profile along a path. Before we extrude the profile we need to make sure that both of the objects, the path and the profile are mesh objects. Now as you can see in the outliner here my path is a curve and the profile is a mesh object. So what I'll do here is I'll select the path and you can see the options are still grayed out. All of the operations that we need to do with Profile Rail Extruder need to be done in edit mode. First of all, we need to select our path in object mode and right click and convert it to a mesh. Then I'll go into edit mode and you can see the options now become available. If you hover your mouse over any of these options, you will get some information. So for example, in order to create a rail, we have to select edges that will form a path and those edges have to be connected. You could theoretically select edges or a path that has gaps in it, but the result will be that the profile will only be extruded along one section of the path. 
So we need to make sure that it's connected edges. In this case, I'm just selecting all of the edges here and then I can hit the make rail button. And this will create two objects, as you can see in the outliner here. One is the rail object and one is the start point. The start point simply is an empty object that is put at the start of the path. And this is the feature that is new in version 3B. So once you create this rail, you can also change the start point and uh, put it over here. I'm not sure how Blender determines what is the start and end of a path. Right now we cannot change the start and end of the path. Simply moving the empty to another corner, for example, won't work. The profile will still be extruded from this point and not from this point if we put uh, the empty object over here. However, there is a way to change the start point and I'm going to show you that later. You only have one chance to swap the start point right at the beginning when you create the rail. And after that, you would have to recreate the rail in order to swap the start point again. Also, you can only use one rail at a time. If you create several rail objects, the add-on will always use the last one you created to extrude the profile. And if you want to use one of the previous rails, you would have to convert it to a rail again. Next, we have to prepare the profile. So let's tap back into object mode. I'm going to select the profile. It already is a mesh, so that's good. We need to tab into face mode, select all the faces. And if you hover your mouse over the select profile option here, you can see that we need to select the profile in edit mode and the profile has to consist of a single face. The position doesn't matter, but it has to be a single face. It can be a triangle, a quad or an angon, but this add-on will only work with a single face. So I'm going to hit F to turn this into a single quad here. And once we've done that, we can hit select profile and you can see the face will be put at the start point. One thing that is important to note is that this will only work if the scale of the object is correct. If I go back to object mode, select the profile and go to my item tab here, you can see the scale is set to one. If you don't get the expected result, chances are that your scale is off. So make sure to hit control A and apply the scale. In this case, we're fine though, everything's working as expected. So I can go back to my edit tab, select the profile, go back into face mode, select the face. And if you want to, you can still make changes to this profile. For example, we could select the points here at the top, do a bevel on those. And let's see, I think I'll just make it something like this maybe. You can also select all the vertices and shift left click twice on one of the verts to make it the active vertex here. Make sure that under transform pivot point, you select active element and I've set up my snap settings so I can automatically snap to vertices. So all I need to do now is hit the G key and hold down control and snap to here. And now I can extrude this profile along the outside of the path. So all we need to do now is hit extrude profile and this is the result that we get. Now you can see we have a gap here and this can easily be fixed. Sometimes when the geometry is overlapping too much, it is helpful to simply select one of the faces here, move it over a bit, select the other face and then use the bridge tool to bridge these two faces in order to close that gap. Once you've bridged the two faces, Make sure to select all the vertices and hit M and do a merge by distance in order to get rid of the overlapping vertices. And then you can select this edge loop here and hit Control X to dissolve these vertices. And fixing this gap after you've extruded the profile probably is the easiest way to do that. What you could also do, for example, if you get overlapping geometry like this, sometimes the bridge tool won't really work on something like that. You could also go back and just move the profile along the path a bit and then extrude and then you will get this gap automatically. What you could also do in a case like this is if I go back to vertex mode and make this one the active vertex again. In this case, I could also rotate the profile 45 degrees but in cases where you don't know the angle, that's not really useful. But in this case, I could do that and extrude and not get this gap at all. Okay, so that's the first example. Let's do another one. 
I'll just hide this collection here and make this one visible. Maybe I'll just get rid of the rail object here. And also I don't really need the start point anymore. So I'll just select it and delete it. Okay, so here we have another example and I think I'll just get rid of this profile. We'll just do the more complicated profile here. So here I have another path and in this case the path already is a mesh object. The profile still is a curve. Now sometimes when you create a rail the start point will be put in a place that is not very helpful if you want to make changes to the profile later. So it can happen that the start point is put somewhere here on those curved areas. In order to prevent that, we can make sure that the start point will not be put on an area where we don't want it. And we have to do this before we create the rail object. And by the way, any changes that you make to the path, you have to make before you turn the path into a rail object. Otherwise, you'll have to make your changes and create a new rail object. Profile Rail Extruder is not very flexible in that respect either. Just to give you an example, I'm going to go into edge mode here and select all the edges and create a rail. And you can see the start point is created over there. Now in this case, that would be fine because it's not put on a curved section of the path. But let me just show you how we can control where that start point will be created. So all we need to do is go to vertex mode. I'll grab these two vertices over here and I'll subdivide them twice. And this will give me three more vertices and two more edges. And what I'll do is I'll just select these two edges, hit X and delete the edges. And now I'm going to select all of the edges and create the rail. And you can see now the start point is put over here and we can change that and put it over here if we want to. So let's go back into object mode and I'm going to select the profile. Now this is still a curve and it's a very detailed curve. You can't really see that if you go into a vertex mode because I've only created the points that I really need to create the shape. And what we could do here is go to the object data properties of this profile and change the resolution. Right now the resolution is very high, but we can change that to something that is a lot lower and will create a lot less polygons. So let's maybe put this at three and we have to do that before we convert it to a mesh object simply because it would be a, a lot more work to change the mesh or to reduce the geometry afterwards. So back in object mode, I'm going to convert this to a mesh and I'll quickly go into vertex mode again. There's a couple of verts that I don't really need. I'm just going to use control X to get rid of those. Maybe we can get rid of this one as well. So this will reduce the polygon count a bit and make the resulting geometry a little less dense. In order to use a profile, we have to select a face. And right now we only have these vertices and edges. So I'm going to select all of them and hit the F key to create a single N-gon. And with the N-gon selected, I'm going to hit select profile. And this will put the profile here. And as before, the center of the face will be put at the start point. In this case, that's not what I want. So with all the vertices selected, I'm going to make this one the active vertex and I'll move this up and extrude that profile along the outside of the path here. Now let's extrude the profile. And there we go. This looks a bit weird. That's because the shape is very complex and it's a tight curve, but we can simply move this face forward a little bit and then use the bridge tool to close that gap here. Again, make sure to merge the vertices by distance and you can remove these edges because you don't need those anymore. In this case, I'll just use Mesh Machine's mirror option to mirror this over. So there you go. That's how Profile Rail Extruder works. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in another video soon.